There ain't no reason. Hello, fellow environmental students. Tristan Hernandez here with my video. So once I got this project, I knew exactly what I wanted to talk about. One of the biggest environmental issues I believe that is affecting Florida and a lot of the earth is invasive species. If you don't know what an invasive species is, it's a plant or animal that was introduced to an environment and that is not native to and it is causing either a large issue or is causing the displacement of native species. But today I'm going to be focusing on plants because that's what I like and that's what I'm talking about. So right now I'm standing in a pine rockland, but this isn't the only kind of environment that exists in Florida. This isn't one of the most heavily invaded areas in Florida. Let me take you to a place that is more heavily invaded. So here we are, Indian Hammocks Park, a hardwood hammock, another kind of environment. Hardwood hammocks are completely different from pine rocklands in a lot of ways, especially because they, they have a lot more uh, water retained, they have canopies, and there's just much more foliage. The main mode of transportation today will be clapping, so when I clap, you know we're changing locations. This is the home of the species that I will be talking about today, and if you can't guess it by knowing who I am, it is... Air potato, Dioscoria bolivera. I have done so much research on this plant, and it is a great opportunity to be able to show you what it is that is an issue. Today, we're going to go into the forest and see what's going on with air potatoes. So, here we are, a more densely populated area. First thing you may see behind me, if you know what it looks like, is air potato. A lot of air potato. I Air potato is a native species to Africa and Asia. It was brought over for a few reasons we think of. Uh, one of them is as an ornamental. Uh, another possible reason, uh, in addition to that, is that they're edible. Uh, the air potato itself is a starchy ball of, it looks like a potato, so it can be boiled in water and can be eaten. Now, in Florida, these are really bitter. They, they're not very good at all. They don't taste very good, so most of the time people will not eat them, and because of that, they became a huge problem. They started overpopulating. Uh, air potato grows about 14 centimeters a day, a day. That's a lot. It may not seem like a lot, 14 centimeters, but a plant that grows that fast, it's vine. So if you see what it's doing here, it is currently covering everything, and it's doing what it's falsification. Uh, by blocking off the sunlight with these huge heart-shaped leaves, it's absorbing the sunlight, taking in all the water, and then blocking all the sunlight from the other plants that are underneath it. Native species can't keep up with it. Air potatoes are also very interesting in the way that their mass, their starchy mass, doesn't just grow a vine. It also produces more air potatoes. And one potato can produce about a hundred little bulbules. A large one can produce about 400. So these 400 starchy balls produce 400 more, and 400 more, and 400 more, and that is why it became a large issue. Right here, here is a leaf, like a, again, heart, heart shape, really, really broad, and absorbs all the sunlight. Here, you see where the node, where the node is right there? Well, it grows there, and then when the wind hits it, or when rain hits it, or when an animal moves around, the air potato drops. And so you'll see that, like here, and like this one, start to grow. And they can be extremely large. This one's a, probably a small size, medium size. They can be this big, or it can be a lot larger. As you can see, these are called the tubers. Um, they're like roots, but except that's what provides the energy. The tubers go deep down into the ground, and these tubers absorb all the water and give the plant the nutrients it needs. Also helps it root it down. That way, they're hard to remove. They 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 go on forever, ultimate like like towers. Look at this. They go on forever. Just gone all the way up. Alright, so now I'm going to show you an example of how difficult these are to dig out. Boom, here is the prime one. This is a thick air potato. Air potato vine, you can't, you can't really, I'm going to try to, you remove the dirt, and of course that's going to affect somehow, but uh, as you can see by my pulling, this is a pretty strong vine. And once you remove it fully, there is the air potato. Just to give you reference, look at how large this leaf is. What the heck is this? It's larger than my palm. And again, this air potato probably, all the leaves it's going to grow are going to be about this size. So if you look up, look at that. They're all growing to about that size. And again, look at how these wrap. They wrap like a freaking, like, little way. So your question might be now, Tristan, if this problem, if this air potato is such a large issue, how are we going to control it? How are we going to remove this enormous amount? Well, uh, I wish I had the answer for you, and I do actually. For about 10 years, there was this insect, this animal, in quarantine at the Invasive Plant Research Center in Broward, and we were trying to see if this insect would only eat the air potato. For a lot of research, boom, 
air potato beetle. All it eats is air potato. We're releasing them all over the place. Uh, as a matter of fact, last Thursday, we released 50 of these air potato beetles actually in an area right not too far from here. I checked today to see if there was any damage and yeah, the air potato beetles are doing something. There's a very little, uh, there's holes all over the air potatoes and you can just see that on the leaves, uh, they are losing mass. Removing them manually, as you can already tell, I just found two right here. I mean, to give you, there's too many of them to even possibly try to get all of them with our hands. So by having this biological control, which is one of the three types of control we have, it, it's very, very effective. So thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day and I'm excited to see all your videos because you saw my videos, so why couldn't I be excited? So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and have a good day. Goodbye. Hashtag swag, thug life, OMG, OMG, OMG. Paychecks like necklaces and bracelets Talking about nothing, not thinking about death Every little heartbeat, every little breath People walk a tightrope on a razor's edge Carrying that hurt and hatred and weapons It could be a bomb